Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia. Welcome back to our subscriber game tournament, Season 2, as we continue with our Round 2 matchup here in Group 4 between Xun Yi in the green versus Beihai Butchers in the red. And for this first match here, Xun Yi will be defending. So taking a look at the draft, we have Huang Fu Song, Xun Yu, and Wen Chou. Where Xun Yu is probably used for his Ancient Wisdom ability, which grants you 3 minutes of foresight. The weakness of that is if the enemy has a stock general, let's say Yan Bai Hu, then he can just simply wait for the three minutes and then proceed with any sort of sneaking that he wanted to do because the ability will time out and there's really no penalty to time. For a siege battle, you can't really initiate in those three minutes, so I don't know if this is a correct choice. He is one of the stronger generals with foresight ability since he has double health and a pretty decent weapon and I believe he also has a passive ability that can increase melee you know, capabilities but I don't know if he's the right choice here. He also has an interesting roster where he gets Dong Zhuo's unit which is why we see one C down cavalry on him. Now for Huang Fu Song, much more of a meta pick here. We have three units of the Defender of Empire, which are unbreakable spear guard unit with access to turtle to help them block enemy range. We have one pearl dragon and one destroyer of treachery, which is a splash damage shot cavalry, good for clearing out units on the street. Then for Venchol, we have four units of the northern units, two of the veteran D spearmen, which I don't know uh, I approve of because they don't have a lot of protection against range, and for siege battles, range is much more prevalent than land battles. And finally, we have two of the Saber Infantry, which are okay. I think most of the Northern unit have a decent value proposition in terms of cost and stat, so not terrible choices, but maybe not the best. Then looking at Beihai Butchers leading the attack with Kong Rong, Xu Hua, and Huang Fu Song. So we have a tribuchet, level 8. We have a Defender of Empire, so a source of oil arrows to destroy those towers. And then we have one crossbow, in this case Fury of Beihai, Koron's unique unit. A decent amount of range, not a lot of it, but a decent amount. And then we have Xu Huang, two Pearl Dragons, two Zhan Ma Jian, and two of the Northern Saber Infantry. Hmm. I'm not sure if I love this. I feel like... All three units are probably not optimum here. Uh, if the money was going to be spent on something premium, especially on a Sentinel General, going with a Poarm unit, perhaps like Protector of Heaven, if it's recruitable even on him. Actually, I'm not sure. But we know for sure he has Tingzhou units, and he could have picked a lot of Tingzhou units instead of these and I think will be probably better, because then you get a combination of both Charge Reflect and Charge Negation, which makes units a lot more flexible, especially when you run up against Cavalry. Then finally, we have Huang Fu Song with three units of Defender of Empire. This is going to be the Turtle unit to drag aggro from the towers and help make pushes on offense. So let's hop into game and see how the deployment goes and see how this battle actually plays out. So, looking at our battle here, we have a concentrated attack on the segment of the wall where there are no bastions, thus the siege weapons will not be very useful. That is very smart. It doesn't look like Beihai Butcher is planning to use any of the ram and siege tower, which really is a shame. I think these are super underutilized, and he's going to rely on his trebuchet, which has 20 ammo, to do most of the dirty work against the wall uh, to open up a path for his units to go through. I imagine the turtle will move up, and then we have some bomb arrows or oil arrows clearing out the towers, and then clearing a hole in the wall, rest of the unit move in. And because of the tribuchet threat, Xun Zhong Yu has moved his unit back to the center square, but not on the actual platform. The two cavalry to the side is quite interesting. I wonder what he's trying to do here, uh, but in essence, it's a pretty standard layout. No barricade here, I quite approve. And the barricade that he did place, I'm okay with as well. So it looks like he's planning to fight mainly in the square here. And we'll see how that goes. So we'll probably fast forward this initial part because there's not going to be any resistance to this, you know, wall destruction that's going to go on. Looks like he's going to be trying to take out this wall here. 
two volleys, three volleys. Not bad. Three volleys for that. We can live with that. Hopefully he doesn't use any more ammo and just wait for the oil arrow here to do their job as they have grab aggro. Now the overlap would be kind of bad. There we go. Good. That's one down. That's a second one down. And that's a third one down. I wouldn't move them too close. I think this is fine. They can stop. Perfect. And that's it. Oh, switching targets. Unfortunate. It does happen. Uh, that's why I don't recommend just moving them. Once they grab aggro, just stop moving them. Don't give them a reason to switch targets. Uh, we got the general coming in. Never mind. The cavalry looping around, right? The suicide charge. Only the sea down cat. The destroyer of treachery has been saved. I was not expecting that. He looped all the way around to try to take out the defenders, which I think is a good choice if he could take out the I mean, he took out a chunk of the Fury Bay High. We totally missed that action, but from the damage, it's pretty clear he dived into the crossbow. They didn't do anything to the trebuchet, and these 20 damage are from the tower, so we can ignore that. It's a suicide charge. I don't hate it. If you can take out, you know, 33% or like basically 30% of the Fury Bay High, that's not a bad trade. Because he can deal, those 40 units can do a lot more damage later on. My question is, why not also keep this cavalry on the side just as a threat? So that when they move in, they have to be extra cautious. Okay, we can back to three times speed. I was not expecting a side charge like that, which is definitely great. Now the cavalry is being shifted. Maybe he's trying to loop around. Maybe you look for angle on this side. And then he goes back. Never mind. Yeah, so now the main problem is, as you can see, you're playing a defensive siege battle and you drafted zero range. Um, I know a lot of players have a habit from playing the land battles and feeling that range units are super hard to protect, very inefficient in multiplayer that's not the case in siege battles you have so much terrain advantage like range units can sit here and just free fire there's nothing that can reach them so by not drafting any range at all on defense you're being super passive now you know the other side can set up their army whatever way they want there's no counter threat you know they can place their range to whittle down your units Especially this trebuchet, it's going to be interesting to see where he fires. I'm going to speed it up a little bit because I feel like the trebuchet is going to take some time to move. And we'll see what happens. So we got some caltraps being thrown down. Not going to make a big difference. I would soften them up with my trebuchet first. I mean, like this, clearly Xu Huang could dismount, go slam this, and then walk back. That's how I would take care of this. I would not use any ammo on them. But this is pretty free. Blame the Phoenix is like the best thing against something like this. You can easily just turtle on the opposite side. The Caltrap don't hurt that much. And then just dismount your general right in the middle or behind your turtle, walk them up, crush them. Because who can really come and stop that? Nobody. That cavalry is kind of scary. I would seal up the street here, seal up the bridge, and then just start slamming the units. There's no slam ability on this side. There's a hell of arrow, but if you turtle up, you're fine. So I would shut those down. If we're going to melee fight, then something like Jama Jian would splash. Okay, bomb arrows. Yeah, it's kind of cool. You do kill some, but I would save it for these. How, how many ammo do we have? Do we have left? Where are they? 24. Oh, there's plenty. Okay, so so sure. Bomb away then. As you can see, when you're densely packed and they're throwing basically miniature trebuchet shots at you, it's not a pretty sight. But I would still argue, Claim the Phoenix is a free ability to use to, to crush units like this. So Hall was one's coming out for a hail of arrows, looking pretty obvious. No response and quite tightly packed. I expect a good hit. Although the Caltrap's gonna slow him. Ah, he kind of voted it. Good. 
Moving into shield wall. There's decent amount of formation. Oh, he's just gonna get shot in the face. This is not this is not how you wanna do this. No. Oh, he was aiming for him too. You can see the adjustment. Got two hits down. And now I don't know about this. Lost about 13k health. Decent chunk. Flame the Phoenix. Don't charge them. Oh, that was risky. They were moving, but there's obviously the risk of dismounting yourself here. Yeah, there's no response. There's no general that can really do anything, and they're just dead. Northern Saber. That's a slow fight. I mean, there's a lot of really good, you know, melee unit, whether it's Jamma yet, whether it's, um, where is his, um, Pro Dragons? Yeah, Pro Dragons really good for this type of fight. Dismounted. What did I say? Stop doing that. Flame the Phoenix. Just flaming get out. Okay. Targeting the generals. He's using his bow to do some damage. It's kind of wasteful to hit, you know, Defender Empire here with the big shields. This is free hit, so it's all good here. He's getting too close to the tower, though. Flame. Use flame. Okay, he's just gonna whack them. The cavalry is kind of looking for opportunities, but the cow traps also kind of working against them. Here comes the fury of bay high damage. That's what I was worried about. These northern veterans, the infantry, you know, you have no range block chance. Your high armor isn't good against crossbow. Oh, that was a great shot. Accurate. Oh my god. Okay, they're looping around. The full loop. They got the full kill. Can we get some Flame the Phoenix action, please? I mean, he probably used it, but like, there's better opportunities like right now. Targeting general is a good idea. Oh, only got one off though, unfortunately. Too tight in combat, so that's coming around, but. Do we have any spear? Oh, we don't have any spears, so they could come over and track down the trebuchet if they want, but they have stopped for some reason. I guess he's microing uh, Hongfuzong out. Oh, he's staying. Keep running. Just keep running. Don't stop. I mean, now he's wavering. He's not. I mean, he's not completely wavering yet, but now he's not even going to bounce back. Yeah, because you have no range, you can't really stand up, and now you're just getting pushed back. Cavalry's finally making their move. It's going to be a long time before they can get there. The problem is, it's tough to break through Defender Empire, right? They're unbreakable, they'll last forever. Really should just save Xu Huang to break them with Flame of the Phoenix. I wouldn't even have him over here fighting. Oh, look at those hits. They're going to be good. Oh, wow. The punishment's coming. No response, so perhaps the trebuchet will get white before it shoots its remaining 11 shots. Oh, he's getting, he's moving, he's moving, he sees it. I mean, I would just move a spear unit back. Got the roar on the unbreakable units and the unbreakable general. Well, I guess almost almost not unbreakable. Turning the tide is activated off. Ooh! Xun Yu with his, uh, you know, fast attack rate, double health, and uh, good weapon. Cleared out that. And they got their bridge back. This is interesting. And he's not actually moving anything to protect his tribuchets. Who knows? Maybe this will turn around. I wouldn't dive in here to fight. Kong he's not a threat. What if you get dismounted in front of all these infantry? 
Here comes, here comes. Alright, they got about half of their ammo off. Definitely still a good thing to get rid of it. The range unit's not really finding good angles. No, don't get distracted. Don't chase him. He's gone. He's negative 25. No, stop the last couple shots. He's also pulling units to chase Ventral here. There we go. There we go. Yeah, focus. Focus. Coron's down. Ventral's dismounted, as you can see, which is the big problem. Wait, is his horse running? Yeah, it's running away. He's just dismounted. It's like I'm like, why is his horse... Speaking of horses, they're here. They have gotten distracted again. Why is he selecting them? What is Coron going to do to you? Stop the trebuchet! Mulvils won't actually bounce back. Come back. Get some shots off. Kill off their range. This cavalry really delayed. I don't know if Ventral wants to be fighting Pearl Dragons, but I think he can win. He should do his roar. It would actually route them. Minus 30. And the cavalry's gonna come help. Just roar. Use it. Don't take any more damage. Alright, the bomb arrows is actually routing Huang Fuzong. He should just kite it out this way. I don't know why he went here. He can't shoot his volley here. He can shoot it from here. Why are the generals just standing here? I don't understand this at all. But they won this fight. They clear through. Now the problem is, you can't really flank Defender of Empire, but perhaps... He, is he shooting through his own unit? He's got on the bridge with this much health just to fire one volley. It'd been so much easier if he shot it from here. And why are they not joining the fight? They should just come here. All his units should push. Waiting is not, you know, the solution here. Now the cavalry's got into a wedge. I, I don't fight the unbreakable guys. At least they're moving. This is not really a charge. They can probably get through it. He's targeting Pearl Dragons. Why not the range unit? Hamstring actually looks like a, you know, rain, a, a AOE splash when you use it on foot. So that would actually work. Kill the range. The cavalry is just wasted. All right, they're finally coming. Why are they not coming? Okay, a roar against some of these. These are breakable. The northern units are breakable. The pearl dragons are breakable. I mean, I guess he doesn't need them, but um, with them will be a lot easier. We got the tribuches coming back. We got actually flanking action, which is great. A couple more hamstring splashes will be fine. The cavalry is being pulled to chase the northern saber. Oh, I guess he was targeting that, so he's just chasing out. There we go. Another hamstring. A hamstring. These got pulled off the bridge. I guess they don't want to get flanked, but... So basically we have three unbreakable units. I think Shinomi got this. He has a lot of reserve units. <laughs> yeah, I think the unit choice on Xu Huang was terrible. If Xu Huang brought Qingzhou unit, this would not have happened. Like Pearl Dragons, Northern Saber, Jai Ma Jian. They're just not better than Qingzhou units. Even if you compare the damage. I think Ventro's gonna solo this. Well, 
Well, I think Beihai Butcher's biggest problem was when he sent Xu Huang to chase inside and fight over here by the towers alone and basically lost his one general that can clear crowds. He had absolute range advantage and just had to have a little bit more patience. Just block off this, block off this with two units, block off the back, and then just use the remaining tribuchet shots to soften up the units, which he was doing a great job of. His Beihai units could have been, you know, the Fury of Beihai units could be shooting instead of wasting most of their time doing nothing. And just be patient. There's no enemy general that can really punish you at this point. They're not even coming out, so just let the units grind. Just have Xu Huang come in, do a slam, back off, and then just wait. Then fight on your terms, fight on your side, and try to get the towers down with the bomb arrows. You could shoot them from here and here. There's no range on the other side, so freedom of fire. But instead, Xu Huang rushed in, got killed, and then things became a lot more passive. And then allowing that cavalry to loop all the way around, telling you they were chasing the generals, telling you they were chasing the generals, and still no, nothing came back to protect the siege weapons. I, I don't understand that. That is just a lot of blind play right there. We can fast forward this. We all know the result here. And that last guy right there. There we go. Let's see the actual numbers. So, yeah, despite having free shots, you can see tribuchets won't do that much damage to units. Um, there were about eight shots left. I think by the time he died, maybe nine. Um, it probably could have got another, I want to say maybe 50 kills at most. It's not going to do a lot. The threat of it pushing enemy back is the main strength. The fact that these two cavalry units got so many kills, tremendous value. And that also goes to show you want to use the cavalry you recruit. Don't be shy. Doesn't matter if this guy dies. If he goes out, you know, kill 72, including about 40 plus of the uh, Fury of Beihai, that is a great trade. You take that every time. And then after that, you know, the main difference was how the splash damage general was used, right? Xu Huang with the uh, Flame of the Phoenix not really doing his job. Over chasing. He did trade a general. He took out the enemy Huang Fusong, but then he traded himself away. And the enemy, you know, once you have a general who has splash, doesn't matter what type of infantry they have. You just go in and just slam. I mean, eventual misplayed a bit, but it was more forgiving because by that time Xu Huang's gone. It's like not, you know, the remaining generals can't really punish him. There was really no cavalry on this side that could punish him, and he had a lot of health due to the fact that he's a champion, and he just did work on the infantry, basically. Uh, even Xun Yu at the end racked up 100 kills here. So pretty impressive fight. Uh, definitely a bit of back and forth. Um, it definitely looked like the high butchers with the range superiority had the slow and steady push, but I think he overdid it with Xu Huang, and that kind of turned everything around, and the unit choices. I think the choice of not bringing any Tingzhou unit, which are misplaced devotion, protects you from any sort of roar abilities. It actually makes them stronger when you roar them. And the fact they can output more damage in these street fights are going to do a lot better than these unit that will break, these unit that will not do as much damage. Um, so yeah, that's the result. We'll see how they turn around in the second match when they alternate sides to determine if they will move on to the top eight or will both of them join me in round three so until then bye